Hey babes in bookland, this is a tag. Today I'm going to be doing the OK So Booksically tag. I was tagged by Sean the Book Maniac and the originator of this tag is Andrew from OK So Booksically. I will link both of their videos down in the description box. If you haven't seen Sean the Book Maniac's version of this, I highly, highly suggest you watch it. Um, it's hilarious. So first question is tell us your user slash blog slash channel name and your real name. So my channel name is Challenge Thy Shelf and my name is Michelle. Question number two is open Instagram, search and chat about the first three posts. So because I film with my phone, I had to just sit down quickly and jot these down. But uh, the first in my Instagram feed was by Red Letter Media. If you guys are not familiar with Red Letter Media, this is a YouTube channel that discusses movies. And not just any movies, but really shitty sort of B, C, D title movies. However, this group of gentlemen has elevated the art of shitty films. And they have a really cool format called Best of the Worst where they get together and they watch three movies and critique them and talk about them afterward. They do incorporate some game show elements into it, which makes it really fun. They're a great channel. Definitely go check them out. Next in my feed was by Shit Gardens. This is an Instagram that is solely dedicated to terrible gardening, terrible landscaping, terrible lawn ornaments, um, anything sort of garden and landscape related, but it's really hilarious. Just lots of rude looking plants and knots and trees that look like other parts of the body. It's great. So definitely go check them out if you haven't. Next is Parallel Narrative. This is uh, my friend Emily who has an Instagram account where she homeschools her children but does a lot of uh, posts around things that they're studying and topics that they're learning. One of the things I love so much about her posts is that she often is uh, photographing books and things that um, she's reading currently or that the children are reading. And I often find recommendations and books that I have never heard of before by people who I've never heard of before. So if you guys are interested in looking for another sort of bookish Instagram, hers is definitely one to check out. Next question is open YouTube and talk about the first three videos. The first one in my feed was by Thy Name is Skepticism. And I think she changed her name recently to Thy Name is Skeppy. She's a young woman, probably about 21, 22 years old. And she does these really great long format uh, essay style videos. And a couple of the series that I really enjoyed recently were she did a series on Jonestown, which was amazing. It was so good. And also, also she does this scumbag series, which is very enlightening. So if you guys are interested, Thy Name is Skepticism or Thy Name is Skeppy, go check it out. The next one in my feed is by Sargon of Akkad. And I know what you guys are thinking if you know him. He is a very contested figure. What I do appreciate very much about his videos is that oftentimes I find that when my fella and I listen to his videos together, we end up having very rich, important discussions about the things that we've heard. I don't always agree with him 100% of the time with Sargon, but I think that he, again, is just one of those figures that really forces me to look at previously held beliefs or previously held sets of knowledge that I have and really question myself, which is important. I'll always value somebody who makes me do that. Because he is UK based, I think there are certain elements about American culture and American politics, just little nuances and subtleties that he doesn't grasp so well. But again, I just, I find that I am very much enriched by the conversations I end up having after listening to his videos. So. Um, if you're not familiar with him also, it's definitely worth a listen. The next video that I have is by Anthony Fantano, the internet's busiest music nerd. Uh, he was doing his uh, best and worst, his five best and worst tracks that he's heard through the week. If you guys aren't familiar with his channel either, definitely go check it out. He is a music reviewer and he listens to all sorts of music, uh, mostly just reviews new things that come out 
but definitely has just a plethora of topics and different types of videos on his channel that you can check out. Um, he does these little starter kits for, you know, punk starter kits or classical music starter kits. Not really, I'm not sure if he does that, but again, he has just such an expansive music vocabulary and he's definitely worth checking out his channel if you're into that kind of thing. Uh, next is favorite song to listen to while reading, writing, and how many plays it's got. I can't really attest to plays on any of these things, and I don't love listening to music while I'm reading or writing, but if I'm writing and I feel like listening to music, I'll usually go for classical music. So my go-tos are Pictures at an Exhibition by Mussorgsky, or the second movement of the Seventh Symphony by Beethoven. Those are kind of my favorites I like listening to. While I'm reading, if there's noise that I need to block out around me, I'll listen to Harry Potter ASMR, uh, The Room ASMR. I find just the scratching quills and turning of pages and wind and rain and those kind of noises to just be really soothing while I read. And again, just it's sort of white noise that helps block out things that are going on in the background. So uh, yeah. Next question is favorite book on your shelf at the moment. So my favorite book currently on my shelf is Of Love and Other Demons by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is about a young girl who on her 12th birthday is bitten by a rabid dog and is subsequently thought to be possessed. A member of the church comes and is charged with performing an exorcism on her. And while he's preparing to perform this exorcism, he falls in love with her. Now, I first read this book when I was about 14 years old, and I remember it just being so powerful and in so far as it teaching me a lot about the complexity of relationships and not just romantic relationships, relationships between mothers and daughters, between fathers and daughters, between teachers and students, between people and their addictions and people and their own relationship and their relationship to God and how and how gray those things tend to be sometimes. So I will always love this book. Every once in a while, maybe like once every three or four years, I'll pick it up and read it again. And I'm always finding something different in it, or maybe that I'm different and my relationship to the book has changed, which is always, I, I love that so much. So favorite book on my shelf. Next is favorite bookish thing you love using as a prop in your pictures slash videos. Um, I had a very lovely viewer comment on this exact thing last week sometime. And the things that I commonly use in my videos, especially when I'm filming in uh, the other room that I film in, is a couple of photos by the artist Travis Louis. Uh, he is a New York-based artist and has always had a fascination with curiosities. He paints these portraits of um, these creatures, these sort of odd figures. While they're very sort of creepy and very haunting, there's also something extraordinarily friendly and lovely about them. They are all often painted in the style of Victorian or Edwardian photographs, which he also loves very much. And he has narratives that go along with these characters a lot of the time. And so it's, those are just very special. I love them. Also, my friend Alex Knight uh, does watercolors. I purchased one of his original uh, artworks and that's something that you can see in the back as well. But he has a very uh, simple style of painting, but it's also a lot of the subject matter that he deals with can be very heartbreaking and very sad, but also very funny. Um, he does have an Etsy that is linked in his Instagram, but if you're interested, it's Alex Knight. You can find him on Instagram. Next question is three books you were dying to reread, but probably never will. The first book I have is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. I've been wanting to reread this in closer proximity to Go Set a Watchman, so hopefully that's something I can get to this year. Another book I've been wanting to reread is The Confederacy of Dunces by John Kennedy Toole. 
I remember the characters in this story sticking in my mind and being so vivid. However, the story has kind of dissipated a little bit for me, so I would like to revisit this and just kind of solidify in my mind what this was again. Um, but yeah, hopefully within the next year or two I can get to that. The next book I have is Thus Spoke Zarathustra by Friedrich Nietzsche. When I read this last, it was in very close proximity to reading The Prophet by Khalil Gibran. And the narrative style and the subjects are kind of similar. So I feel like I want to reread this without The Prophet kind of being in the back of my mind. That way I can just sort of bask in all that is Zarathustra. Um, I might actually reread this this year. I think I'll reread this this year. You'll probably see this again. Next question is amazing bookish finds. Books, bookish things, bookish moments. Uh, the two things I was pretty excited about that I ended up finding this month were I got a used copy of Crash by J.G. Ballard. I've been really, really looking forward to reading this and I was so glad to have come across this. Um, I just think that the complexity and the perversity of the story is something that I'm really going to like. So I'll definitely let you guys know more about that. And then the next book that I have is A Wizard of Earthsea, which is the first book in Ursula K. Le Guin's Earthsea series. Um, I know this is geared more toward a YA audience. However, I feel like for people like myself who have not read Ursula K. Guin Le Guin's work before, this might be a good place to start just to get a feel for uh, the structure of her storytelling, for themes, for character building. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely let you guys know about that. They're not that long. I think they're just a little bit over 200 pages. So I'm excited to get to that as well. As far as bookish finds, uh, one of the things that I have that I really love is a vinyl of um, Gwendolyn Brooks reading her own poetry. This was really cool. I think I got this at the last bookstore in LA the last time I was there. And um, what I've come to learn about this is this the label that it's on, Cademon, was actually sort of the birth of audiobooks. Um, the two women who started it, Barbara Holdridge and her name, Miriam Mantel. Each of them, Barbara Holdridge was working in the publishing industry and Miriam Mantel was working in recording. So they got together, they reached out to Dylan Thomas, they heard he was going to be doing a reading at the 92nd Street Y and recorded him reading his work and thus Cademon was born, the company. So um, they really liked to pioneer women authors too, which was kind of cool. So they recorded people like Eudora Welty, E.E. E. Cummings, um, and I just feel like I want to get my hands on more of these because I love hearing authors read their own work. I think there's something cool when you go back to the written work about being able to hear their voice and their cadence, and it just lends something kind of special to the book. So. Um, also, there's one floating around out there of Eartha Kitt reading African folk tales, which, yes, please. Um, so I'll have to definitely search for more of those and I'll let you guys know if I end up acquiring more of those. As far as bookish moments are concerned, um, Ryan's back. Ryan from For the Love of Ryan just made his triumphant return to booktube. So it's been really awesome to see him again and to see the content that he's been putting out in the last week or two. Um, yeah, I'm going to look forward to seeing more from that guy. So that's cool. And the last question is hottest author slash author crushes. Uh, so it's probably no secret to you guys that Charles Bukowski is one of my favorite authors of all time. Um, also, Richard Flanagan and John Burnside, I've heard fairly recently on the Vintage podcast and just talking about their work and their writing and process. And they just both seem like really lovely human beings. And I did develop a little bit of a, a crush on Richard Flanagan after hearing his, his piece on Vintage. So uh, definitely looking forward to checking out more of those works. For my lady crushes, Clarice Lispector and Octavia Butler have been all up on my radar, so I'm definitely going to pick up more of their stuff in the future. I watched 
an interview of Clarice Lispector, I believe it was the year before, maybe the year that she died. And holy shit, man, there's something about that woman that is just terrifying and magnetic and untouchable. There's just this set of qualities that she possessed that I'm so drawn to and I cannot wait to read more of her work. Okay, so as far as people that I tag in this video, I tag Slow Read Fizz, Charles Explosion, Celia, Bookish Four Eyes, Plots and Points, Final Joe Blow, Todd the Librarian, Beyond the Epilogue, J.D. Archer, Medieval Reader, and paperback junkie. So if you guys have not done this tag before, um, please do. I would love to see what you guys come up with. If you've already been tagged, just ignore me. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.